In part four, we saw Isaac loosening up, getting comfortable, starting to showboat a little bit with that pow demo that he volunteered and repeated four times for Elaine's benefit. Now, Elaine is getting frustrated with this. She realizes this is not going the way it's supposed to be going. So she decides to try to amp up the aggression. But the problem is that Elaine hasn't brought facts to this exchange. She's only brought attitude, and that's going to misfire. Let's take a look. Good, thank you. All right, now let's go back to the argument that you witnessed between Mr. Uh, Depp and actually Ms. Hurd, who was on the phone or the speaker phone. Do you we already revisited <laughs> one damaging part of Isaac's testimony. Didn't work. Didn't work. But the script says Elaine needs to visit this next part of Isaac's damaging testimony. We haven't seen any setup for anything different here. No indication that this time she's going to bring some facts, some evidence, some demonstrated contradiction. Nothing at all. So why we're revisiting this? Don't know. It's not a helpful thing to be doing. Typically damaging testimony. You try to bury that. <laughs> you hope that the jury forgets that. Move on from it as soon as possible. Hammering it in through repetition is not what you want to be doing with the stories that make your client look bad. Recall testifying about Say that? this again, start again, start yes. again. Yes. Let's go back to you testified that you observed an argument between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard. Do you recall that? You came into the room, Mr. Depp had yeah. Amber on speakerphone. Do you recall that? Yeah. This face of regret that Isaac has, yeah, yeah, you 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 feel the the sadness and and and, and the regret co coming out of him that he had to witness this type of thing. It's bad enough to be revisiting it, but to let him do it when he is in this comfortable mode now of just being able to express himself, to be himself, to be the charismatic guy that he is. He is a nice guy. He does feel regret that he witnessed this. He wishes it didn't happen. Look at him. Look at him. Poor Isaac wishes he never had to hear this phone call. But he's going to tell us all about it again, Elaine, if you're going to ask about it. Okay, Mr. Mr. Depp was drunk. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. Good job, Elaine. You landed a jab. Mr. Depp, Mr. Depp was drunk. Good fact. She got the she got the uh, got Isaac to elicit that. Um, he clearly acknowledges it. Doesn't necessarily think that's a big deal. Not necessarily clear the jury is going to think it's a big deal either. But hey, it was a punch. She landed it. And do you recall that Amber was actually in London, not New York? No. You don't recall that? No, I thought it's, it's, I think I thought it was she was in New York. Another example of a fact that doesn't really matter and she's not prepared to establish whether we're in London or New York. If you want to bring some proof to show that it was actually London and not New York to show that Isaac's recollection is not credible, not reliable, then that's a perfectly good reason to ask these types of questions and, and, and to revisit this particular piece of his testimony. If she's got it, she's not bringing it, so nobody knows. All we see is Isaac feeling pretty sure it was New York, and even if it wasn't, we don't really have any reason to think that would matter. Okay, and you recall that Mr. Depp was accusing Amber of sleeping with somebody, right? There was somebody else in the room with her, and that's, that's, and that's what they were arguing about. And so now Isaac is getting back into this comfortable counterattack that he developed in the early rounds where 
He doesn't accept Elaine's question. He doesn't have to answer it. He he can explain it. He can answer it by explaining it. Uh, what, what, was Mr. Depp jealous? Well, there was somebody in the room. You decide for yourself if that means that he was jealous. Really good deflection, really good way of taking this part of his story back to the pieces that do matter. Isaac knows what does matter in this telling. And so it does matter that somebody else was in the room. Are you sure that Mr. Depp wasn't thinking there was someone in the room and she was trying to tell him there wasn't somebody in the room? He, uh, say that again. <laughs> Elaine continues to be bad at asking these questions. She overcomplicates them. She tries to pack too many things into them at once. And so that doesn't, that doesn't make Isaac really uncomfortable. He doesn't mind asking her to repeat. He doesn't feel pressure to ask the question the way that, to answer the question the way that she's asked it. So he's continuing to train her to repeat herself, to deliver the question in the way that he is asking for it to be delivered. This is just back to that basic dynamic of Isaac having control. Are you sure he wasn't saying someone was in the room and she was trying to convince him there wasn't anybody in the room? Well, he said that, that he heard uh, the other voice. <laughs> and so since Elaine is really bad at asking questions, she elicited hearsay. What Johnny says, uh, if offered by Johnny, is, is hearsay. But if offered by Elaine, it's not. It's acceptable. And it's, it's invited error as well. Um, you open the door for somebody to volunteer information that isn't otherwise admissible, then they get to admit it. And so Isaac was perfectly prepared to explain, no, Elaine, the premise of your question is wrong because Johnny said... <laughs> He heard somebody else in the room. That's why he thought it. It was not this implication you're trying to make that Johnny is delusional or Johnny is hallucinating or Johnny is paranoid and making things up. He said he heard somebody else in the room. You didn't want the jury to hear that, but you asked Isaac a bad question and he was prepared to deliver that information. You should take note of that. That's going to be important later on. Okay. And were, did you hear the voice? Oh, no. Okay. I walked in there already. It's, this is already in motion. Right. And Amber's saying, why are you saying that? Right? Amber was, Amber was saying, come on, baby. Why are you being like this? What are you, what are you doing? Come on, Johnny. What, there's no need. Why are you being like this? Right. And it was taunting. And it was taunting. Once again, nope, Isaac is not going to take that punch she's trying to deliver. She's trying to deliver this blow that uh, Isaac somehow misinterpreted the situation. Uh, but Isaac is clearly going to reassert his view of, of what was really going on here. Um, the words are words of denial, but the attitude that he witnessed was one of taunting. Does that sound like somebody who had somebody in the room or somebody that didn't have somebody in the room? What do you think the jury is going to think about that? How, how is it taunting to say, why are, why are you accusing me of having somebody in my room? because they were in the midst of no solution. At that point, it's, it would be, if it, instead of taunting, saying, listen, John, let's talk tomorrow, and let's end this conversation right now, and, every, and, and we'll talk tomorrow, 
and we'll get to an understanding because there's not going to be any solution right now. But there was none of that. It was just con continuous, oh, baby, oh, baby. So and that kept it going. Once again, Elaine asks a direct examination on cross. How is that taunting? This is a very open-ended question. You've just invited him to explain. And so what Isaac has done here that the jury doesn't know yet, uh, but the attorneys certainly know, and those of us who have watched further into this trial by now have known as well, is that this is a great setup to the jury of what these conversations with Amber were like. They're going to hear these conversations on the audio recordings where they just go on and on and on with the taunting and there is no putting it to rest. In fact, when Johnny tries to leave to just get away from this relentless, negative, hateful commentary that she won't let him. She will run in front of the elevator to stop him from being able to leave so that she can continue to taunt him. Isaac is laying the stage for that. He has, uh, he has described it in a way that seems pretty common sense that there are ways to acknowledge that, hey, we just, we just need to put a pause on this. We're not making progress. We need to maybe hang up and, and deal with it at another time, or we need to deal with it in a more positive way. That's a mature way to handle a disagreement, but that's not what disagreeing with Amber Heard is like. She doesn't have an interest in resolving it. She just continues with the, oh, baby, oh, 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 poor you. Oh, poor thing, poor thing with your wife, other dudes. We're going to see a lot more of that. And in retrospect, that demonstration is going to age very well. If, if Mr. Depp in his drunken state was suffering from delusions, and thought he heard a voice and wasn't, do you think it would have been reasonable for Amber to be saying, what's going on? Why are you saying this? What's going on? Did you follow that question? I didn't check it out on the timer, but that was a super convoluted question. Okay, so we have a hypothetical. If Mr. Depp was drunk and delusional, Okay, let's keep that in our minds. If Mr. Depp was drunk and delusional, isn't it possible? Well, anything is possible, Elaine. So anything is possible. But isn't it possible that Amber was just trying to persuade him and it was all in his mind and, and yada, yada, yada? What is he even going to say to this? What, what, what is he even going to say? Terrible question. Um... He wasn't hallucinating. He wasn't delusional. And that's that's pretty much the end of, of your hypothetical question. Really, really badly thought out. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. I'll allow the question if you can answer it. You can answer the question, sir, if you... Would I think it would be what? If, if Mr. Depp was... Suffering from delusions. <laughs> Suffering from delusions. That's the reaction we all had, Isaac, but that's the hypothetical that she gave you. If Mr. Depp was suffering from delusions, you think the jury thinks that that's likely at this point? Does she have any proof of that at this point? That's what she's going to go with. And there wasn't anybody in the room, and he hadn't heard a voice, but thinks he's hearing a voice. Would it be reasonable for Amber to be trying to figure out what's going on? Objection, Your Honor. Hypothetical speculation. I'll sustain his speculation to that. I'm just pausing this one here as an example of um, how these objections can start to develop their own momentum. Um, 
she didn't change anything from her first question. It's still the same terrible hypothetical. It's still the same. Wouldn't it be reasonable? Isn't it possible that Amber was? I mean, it's the same minor rewording uh, premise that, that she's trying, trying to get out. But you notice what she's also doing is she's trying to recharacterize and get away from the testimony that he's already given about what Amber was doing. He can't accept the premise that what Amber was doing was reasonable. It wasn't reasonable. She was taunting him. She wasn't trying to persuade him that there wasn't anybody in the room. She was flaunting it in his face. This is why this is so confusing for Isaac and why he can't quite sort out what he's supposed to do with this question. But at the end of the day, it, it doesn't really matter because the second time the objection worked. The judge recognized, you know what? Actually, that is speculation. Now that I've had a chance to think about it, you're right, counsel. Go ahead and sustain that one. Question. Okay. And, and the bottom line is you came in on the call, so you don't know what he said first or whether there was any voices, correct? Whether he heard voices yes. besides hers? Yes. No, I didn't hear the beginning of the conversation. Okay. Pay attention to when Elaine says, the bottom line is, because that's what she should have said from the very beginning. If this is the bottom line and this is what you're trying to get to, you should just make that point. There was no need to spend nearly five minutes building this up to get to this, this, this point that is the point you want to make about this testimony, that he didn't hear it. He's just relying on, on what Johnny said. Johnny said he heard a voice. That's why Johnny was acting the way that, that he was acting. Doesn't really explain why Amber is taking the taunting attitude. So Elaine still comes out behind in this entire exchange. Uh, but the bottom line is a really good verbal tell that you've already said a lot of stuff you shouldn't have said. This is what you should have said from the very beginning. And the rest of it, that was a mistake. And then after the hang up, he went straight to bed, right? No, after the first hang up, she calls back again, which uh, was 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 it necessary? I don't know. And do then a third time. Knew, do you know whether she knew whether he accidentally hung hung up or not? Again, Elaine has trapped herself here by trying to catch him with details that don't matter. And then after that, he went to bed. Why would that matter, Elaine? What 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 is what are you getting at? What is the bottom line? <laughs> are you gonna are you gonna tell us in like 10 questions down the road after Isaac has been able to explain a lot more? Reiterate how good and precise and clear his memory is and how unwilling he is to let you trap him in an inconsistency. He's going to repeat. She called him back. Why did she do that? Well, how the hell would I know? She wanted to taunt him some more. Apparently, did she know he accidentally, if he accidentally hung up the phone? Elaine. By now, the jury knows these are terrible questions. Of course, he doesn't know. <laughs> if Amber thought that Johnny accidentally hung up the phone. He's not Amber. Ask your own client this question. This is, is reaching the point of just starting to make Elaine look very unlikable because her questions are unfair and her questions are unreasonable. He cannot put himself in Amber Heard's mind to know what she is thinking. It is your job as the attorney to present evidence to the jury of what was in your client's mind if that is going to be an important fact for their consideration in this case. She's just coming across as 
being pushy for no good reason. That he accidentally hung up? Right. Do you know whether she knew whether whether he hung up intentionally or accidentally? No, it's uh, the same okay. way that I wouldn't know if, like, you know, yeah, she didn't know that the telephone line got cut. Right. I mean, maybe burglars, you know, were, were crawling on the roof and cut the line. I mean, maybe maybe there was a massive hurricane that 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 blew in over the last five minutes and uh, and, and it took out took out a took out a, a, a conductor somewhere. Um, I mean, God, Elaine, what a terrible what a terrible question. OK. So, so after the three calls that you testified about, he went straight to bed, right? Went to the couch and laid down. Right, and, yeah. and he was drunk. Yeah, and went and he went and went to sleep. Yeah, he went out. Do you went to sleep again? Don't know if this if this was the actual point of this part of the of the conversation to just elicit Johnny was drunk. Because it's the only point that she really got out of it. Um, and then he went to bed. Okay. Do you know whether he'd taken any drugs that night? No. Okay. Nope. Hadn't taken any drugs. Not going to score on that one, Elaine. So by now, we're seeing how Elaine really has three things to bring to these exchanges. She's got these really weak jabs, right? The Amica cream, the asking for his recollection of details about hair and clothing. None of these have been very effective because Isaac is perfectly capable of countering them. She has this dropping her hands kind of fake that is inviting Isaac with open-ended questions to revisit some of the very damaging parts of his testimony and letting him just open up on Amber with these accounts that he's given, providing greater and greater detail and taking the opportunity to clarify and to show why it's a reasonable interpretation of events. It's an accurate interpretation of events that Johnny was not delusional uh, that Amber was not behaving like somebody who was simply trying to end the fight. And third, she's got these low blows, these real cheap, badly phrased, convoluted, no way this witness could possibly know types of questions. What would Amber be thinking? What would Amber consider reasonable? Things that he's absolutely in no position to be able to answer. So Isaac is weathering all of this really well so far. But what we're going to see in the next section is that he's going to get sick of it. He's going to start getting a little pissed off. And oh, he is going to blast her into the ropes. Join me there.